This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in your very own backyard of Perrysburg, Ohio. The Fair Trade certified USDA organic and integrity is their core value. Um, they have high quality coffee beans from far off lands such as Colombia, Brazil, Indonesia, and Peru. Can't go wrong with any of the great, great coffee that the Iron Bean Coffee has over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that's Iron Bean Coffee Company, who are America's local coffee roaster. Kyle, not a soul. Well, I mean, the, the Sloop Cat's watching us live. Okay, so so a few souls. Because we always cut it out of the podcast. We nailed the clap this episode. Did, did you <laughs> notice that? Sometimes we don't always get that clap perfectly in sync. I think we destroyed it this time. Uh, that's that's it. That's that's the tweet. We we destroyed that. That's the tweet. B tier. <laughs> wow. Come on, gangland. <clears throat> Come on, gangland. That's that's harsh, my man. That is harsh. No, you said what you said. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into it for today's episode. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today, Jared? How many times can you say my name in one sentence? Jared, how are you doing, Jared? Just two? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm going to need two. you to work. I'm going to need you to work on that. All right. Kyle, this is silly season. Uh, the silly season is where we talk about all the silly things that happen in the uh, in the uh, off season immediately after the season. Coaching changes, schedule adjustments, uh, all, all, all that weird, stupid stuff that, that happens this time of year. Uh, yeah, so coaching change is kind of a big deal right now, right? Mm -hmm. Kind yeah. of a big deal. Kyle, we have a complete overhaul. A complete overhaul of not just the defense. Not just the defense. And, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not going to talk about... Uh, we're not going to talk about Justin Fry this episode because we, we talked about Justin Far Fry on a previous episode. We're also probably not going to talk a lot about Jim Knowles this episode as we talked about Jim Knowles on a previous episode. But Kyle, uh, four big, four very big movements happening since we last talked some football on this podcast. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, one thing that a lot of, a lot of fans really wanted to see this year was a defensive overhaul and well you got it <laughs> uh so yeah Kabuto, i regretted it the second i said it <laughs> so gary combs out uh washington out and in comes um a cornerback coach from cincinnati perry eliano as the new safeties coach that is correct sir and then tim walton yeah. Coming back to Ohio State as well. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State Buckeye from back in the day, uh, back in the early 90s. Uh, he was a very, very good corner for Ohio State. Kyle, let's, let's talk a bit about Tim Walton. Let's start with Tim Walton. Um, he was a two-year starter for Ohio State. Uh, recorded 159 tackles, 10 interceptions, 11 pass breakups, and nine tackles over the course of his career. That's a nice stat line right there. When was the last time an Ohio State corner, Kyle, had had 10 interceptions? It's been a good minute. It's been a good while. Yeah, that's that's an impressive stat line right there. Also, like tackles for a loss. I feel like tackles for a loss um, the past two seasons have come at a premium for Ohio State, a thing we definitely want to see change. Uh, and definitely a thing that uh, Jim Knowles' defenses are known for. Uh, if you're an Ohio State fan that was like, oh, I hate this bend, but don't break. I hate this bend, but don't break. I hate this. I hate this soft shell. I hate this. I hate that. I wish the defense was more aggressive. Well, do I have good news for you? <laughs> 
Yeah, oh boy, do I have good news for you. Yeah, so I'm I really like the hires. Uh definitely definitely not like big names. I mean, if you follow a lot of the coaching that goes around the country, these are these are pretty good coaches. Just I think I think the one concern that I have and many other fans have too is how how well can they do recruiting? That's that's going to be the big thing for me at least. Well, yeah, so, you know, Tim Walton, we can talk a lot of positives about Tim Walton, and there's a lot of positives to talk about. Um, If you want to talk about a negative, uh, he left college football for the pro football game as a coach back in 2009. His last defensive experience was was at Memphis in 2008. So he's not been on the recruiting trail for a while. It's been it's been a while. It's been 14 years since he went out and recruited people. It's been a minute. So that's a a, a pause for, you know, one of the reasons why you went back and you got Kerry Combs a couple years ago was because the Ohio State cornerback recruiting had fallen off a little bit. You go, you bring Combs back, and the cornerback recruiting fixes in an instant. Now, unfortunately... You also hired a cornerbacks coach who had never been a defensive coordinator before, and that it just it didn't go well. It was an experiment. It was a thing to try. It could have worked out. It didn't. Mm-hmm. It could have worked out. It didn't. So Tim Walton, absolutely a excellent cornerback coach. That is without question. A uh, quote from Jalen Ramsey know anything about football you know who jalen ramsey is one of the best corners in the nfl right now quote coach walton he's probably one of the best defensive coaches if not the best defensive coach i have ever had in my life he was really good he was not only a good coach uh coached us up hard maybe sure he uh sure we was on our technique but also a good person too he goes on to say you know he cared about us as people you know sometimes these people with you know, positions of authority don't really care about you as a person. He cared about you as a person, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's high praise from a incredibly talented cornerback in the NFL. Yeah, exactly. Kabuto recruiting pitch. Want to play like a, want to play like you're an NFL corner. Learn from me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. But it, it does, it does take more than that. And he's going to have the Ohio state polo on that helps. But it is going to take more than that, especially if you're talking about getting like the Ohio State polo and the I've been a NFL cornerbacks coach since 2008 stuff. That will get you guys. Those two things alone will get you guys. Now, the difference being is, are you getting the top some of the top 10, 15 cornerbacks in the country? Or are you getting some of the top five cornerbacks in the country? That's where things that's. That's where you need someone who's a great recruiter on top of everything else. And we just don't know with Tim Walton at this point. And we should probably give him a year or so to settle in as a recruiter as far as, you know, all of that goes. Yep. Yep. Uh, But Kyle, he's been in coaching since 1995. Um, Graduate assistant at Bowling Green. Uh, Spent He's at Bowling Green until 1999. Uh, Spent time at Memphis, Syracuse, LSU, where he won a national title under Nick Saban as the uh, defensive backs coach at LSU, Uh, was the defensive backs coach at the University of Miami for a handful of years. Um, Why is that in there twice? That's weird. Thank you, Wikipedia. Uh, Then Memphis. he He changed from a defensive back to a defensive coordinator. That's why. Is that? Oh, it does say that. Um, haha. Uh, then then moved on to the NFL, where he spent time with the Lions, the Rams, the Giants, and most recently the Jaguars. Yeah. So so, yeah. It, so he you know he did he was at the Jaguars before Urban Meyer showed up, but he did coach with Urban Meyer for a quote unquote year less. <laughs> if, at if, Jackson. if I if I was a if I was a hiring manager, I'd be a little concerned seeing how much he's jumping around. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's just the NFL, baby. That's that's it is. that's just how that's just how life works in the NFL. It is. Yep. They are stinky cats, Kabuto. 
they are. Yeah. So uh, moving on to the cornerback coach, Harry Alano. Yeah. Yeah. I, he is, well, he's the safeties coach. He was the cornerbacks coach at Cincinnati. Yes. He's going to be taking over the safeties coach role at Ohio state. Um, let's see two of Alano's corners at Cincinnati. Uh, you you know these names already, but I'll say them anyway. Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant uh, were both all Americans, all American cornerbacks at Cincinnati. When's the last time you had a all American cornerback at Cincinnati, let alone two off of the same damn team? Uh, Bryant won the Jim Thorpe Award. <laughs> Uh, he joined Cincinnati in 2020. Uh, that season, that season, uh, they were top three in the country in interceptions and pass efficiency, fifth in opponents' yards per attempt, and their pass defense ranked number 39 in the country. Fast forward to 2021. Passing yards allowed per game by Cincinnati this year, Kyle. 169 that's that's nice is what that is like jokes aside that's still nice very impressive first first overall in the country in opponents passer rating third in interceptions how many interceptions ohio state have this year not that many uh you don't actually have to look it up if you don't want to kyle um third in yards per attempt kyle Yards per attempt is absolutely my favorite stat for a passing defense. Yards per game, well, that can sort of be dictated by other factors, right? Yards per game can be dictated by how many times they throw it, if they're if they go down early, blah, 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 blah. That 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 can all sort of be manipulated and twisted into weird stuff. To me, I think if you had to take one stat, if you had to take one stat for me, it's really focusing in on yards per attempt. And Cincinnati was number three in that last year. Overall defense, uh, uh, scoring defense, they were fifth in the country, allowing only 17 points per game. And 10th in the nation for overall defensive yards allowed at 318 per game. 12. Uh, my show notes say 10th. Oh, no. I mean, Ohio State had 12 interceptions for the year. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, I, I told you you didn't have to look that up. Well, I did anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. So, yeah, definitely changes that, um, like, like I mentioned earlier, changes that Everybody wanted to see it. Obviously, Coach Day wanted to see it too. So, yeah, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited here. Herp did get and... robbed on that one, Kyle. Can you can you can you up that to 13 for for Kabuto? We're just upping that to 13 because Burke did get robbed on that one. He did. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure right. Cincinnati probably got robbed on one at some course during the season too. But in you know we're we're gonna we're we're gonna give Burke an extra one on on this show. Yeah. All right. Um, I think this is a good time for for an ad break, real quick, Jared, and we'll talk about the overall coaching and how how it stands currently. Now we also have two additional hires to talk about, and then we have some Ask Sloopcast questions. Uh, Kyle, I don't know. Uh, can you uh, maybe queue up some football related Ask Sloopcast questions while sure I do thing. this ad read? Let's see. Iron bean coffee. Let's see. Let's let, let's check out. Let's let's check out some of the weird. Ones. OK, Kyle, the Raging Tiger, which is the bourbon barrel aged beans currently sold out. I told you guys you have to jump on those while you can. You should always listen to me when I'm worrying when I when I warn you about those things. Uh, we don't talk a lot about the specialty coffees, those exotic coffees. Uh, the monsoon, let me, let me move this tab over here. So I'm not looking all the way off camera. Uh, there's the monsoon Malabar. There's the Kenyan AA micro lot, dark limited edition coffee and the Guatemalan Antigua. I think I'm pronouncing that right. 
Uh, let's see. Th those are some of the exotic coffees. We don't talk a lot about those, um, but those are some amazing small batch limited edition coffees. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. Let's talk about some of our flavored coffees. Jump on over to the flavored coffees. Let's see. Is anything sold out? The mom's carrot cake still sold out. Kyle, I have good news for you. However, the white chocolate peppermint, which is a seasonal favorite, still in stock. This might be your last chance. I'm warning you guys right now. This might be your last chance. Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea how much longer it's going to be available. It is available still in both whole bean and uh, pre-ground. Both of those versions still available. Uh, I know. I know. Kyle. Kyle seemed disappointed last week that the whole shebang sampler was back. Not still just the whole bean on that. And there's only nine in stock, Kyle. There's only nine in stock. You want to? If you want to make sure to grab one of those. Uh, Whole shebang samplers. There's only nine in stock. Still available just in whole bean. You're going to want to jump on that as soon as possible. Only nine in stock. These coffees go, man. Th this isn't some huge operation. This is just, just you know, uh, your your friendly neighborhood coffee company. Just saw Spider-Man. It was really good. Uh, this is your friendly neighborhood, neighborhood coffee company. This will not stay in stock for very long, especially some of these exotic coffees, especially some of these specialty coffees like the Bourbon Barrel Age and the Seasonals, like the White Chocolate Peppermint. Um, the Cinnamon Roll currently in stock, it does look like, with the exception of the Carrot Cake, uh, we do have a full complement of all the flavored coffees. Kyle, the Peanut Butter Chocolate Buckeye available. I don't have to describe to you what that is. It's pretty self-evident. The Bananas Foster Currently in stock, the butter pecan, the cinnamon roll, the salted caramel mocha, the vanilla hazelnut, all still in stock. But like I said, you have to act on these things while you still can, because you just never know when things are going to move in and out of stock. So uh, you might want to go buy some coffee while you still can over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. <clears throat> okay, quick cough break, and here we go. I just said that like I was going to edit something. I'm not going to edit anything. I stopped editing the podcast a long time ago, Kyle. It just it just happens. I clip I clip the little bit off the front and then I publish the damn thing. That that's all that happens. All right. Uh Kyle, let's jump back into this. Let me minimize this. I don't need that anymore. Two additional hires, Kyle. Uh these aren't uh quote unquote official coaches. Um uh, you guys having some issues? Anyone else getting some digital breakup on the audio? Uh, no, you are too. Could be Discord. Uh, it could be Discord. I, I currently aren't. Uh, Kyle, have you heard anything on my end? You've sounded fine this entire episode to me. Yeah, you're, you're kind of breaking up a little bit for me. Eh, it's a good thing we record our audio channels independently, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. Um, sorry about that, Discord folks. Uh, it should be, it still should be good for uh, the recording, though. So I think we'll be fine. I don't, do I, I don't know. I really shouldn't have anything eating up any bandwidth, but all right, Kyle, we got to, we got to move forward. Because, uh, like I said, I'm not going to cut any of this out. I just, I'm just not. So Kerry Combs out, Al Washington out, Matt Barnes. We, we've known for a while out Greg Strudrawa. We talked about on a previous silly season episode out in Jim Knowles, Tim Walton, Perry Alano, and Justin Fry. Again, uh, we talked about Knowles and Fry on previous episodes. Kyle, this brings the current lineup head coach, Ryan day, special teams, coach Parker Fleming. And then your offensive staff is, Offensive coordinator slash tight ends, Kevin Wilson. Quarterbacks coach, Corey Dennis. Running backs coach, Terry Alford. Excuse me, Tony Alford. Why the hell would I say the wrong name? Uh, wide receiver coach slash passing game coordinator, Brian Hartline. Offensive line coach slash, you know, Kyle, it was reported. It was reported there for a second that he's going to be the run game coordinator, but then I saw like assistant or associate head coach. He's definitely coaching the offensive line. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see past that. Uh, on the defensive coaching staff side, Jim Knowles, your defensive coordinator slash linebacker coach, Larry Johnson, still your staple defensive line coach, 
Tim Walton on the corners, Perry Alano on the safeties. Kyle, do you think we're done here? Is this the coaching staff for 2022? Yep. I think, I think we're good. I think, I think this is your, your, your coaching staff going into the 2022 season. I want to state for the record that, um, <coughs> excuse me, here comes Al Washington. We're both given an opportunity to return. I've been saying for a while that I didn't expect Al Washington to leave and I didn't. Uh, but they were both given an opportunity to return. The Kerry Combs things does not, the thing does not surprise me. I don't know the details of of what exactly he was offered. I can only assume that he was offered a, a pay decrease and the role as cornerbacks coach, and that he basically was given the opportunity to sign a new contract, um, and then he just sort of sat on it for two weeks until he didn't make a decision, and then Ryan Day made a decision for him. So mm. that's from what I I have seen reported how that played out. Um, Al Washington what was a similar situation. He was no longer going to be the linebackers coach. That was a condition for Jim Knowles coming in. Jim Knowles is going to be the linebackers coach. That that was that was a condition of Jim Knowles coming in. Jim Knowles is a linebackers guy. Uh, he's the defensive coordinator. It's it's his say. If if he He's a defensive coordinator. If he wants to coach the linebackers, he gets to coach the linebackers. Uh, Al Washington yep. was essentially given the opportunity to become, and I don't know what the actual, um, I don't know what the actual title, the actual, like, on the business card title would have been, but essentially it would have been, like, an assistant defensive line coach, the heir apparent of Larry Johnson, and that was not a, uh, that was not a role that Al Washington liked so that's uh he, he was not willing to take that role he's moved on uh I, it's been reported i don't know if it's official yet but i know it's been at the very least reported that uh he's going to be joining the notre dame staff as a defensive line coach yeah it's it's one of the it's one of those i think you said it best either last episode or two two episodes allegedly or yeah. reportedly reportedly yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was our last Silly Season episode. I quite frankly forget where it falls in line with just regular episodes. It may have been our last episode. I don't remember. Uh, Gangland says, there's some smoke about the defensive line coach from Oklahoma State. Uh, what I'll say right now is that they're full. In order to bring in a defensive line coach from Oklahoma State, either Larry Johnson would have to retire, Parker Fleming would have to be demoted slash fired, or the defensive line coach would have to come in um, like Michael Hunter, like uh, Coy McFarland, uh, who are uh, two guys from the Oklahoma State staff who will be joining Ohio State as well. Um, uh, Michael Hunter was a graduate assistant, Coy McFarland, a defensive quality control coach. Uh, so they're coming in as sort of, you know, the sort of unofficial coaches, like, you know, staffs tend to have a few of. So in order for, in order for someone else to come in, you either have to make room for them or they're going to have to take one of those unofficial coaching roles. And if he's currently the defensive line coach at, at Oklahoma state, he's not going to come in and be a quality control guy at Ohio state. He's just, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of smoke going around. I don't know how true any of that is, so we'll just we'll just keep it on the the rumor mill for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, how about some ask Slipcast questions, Jared? Yeah, for sure. Let's let's do that. Um, why are coaching numbers limited? More cooks is worse. <laughs> Let them try. Um. It's essentially an attempt to not let staffs just balloon and balloon and balloon and balloon um, because that's exactly what would happen. And that is what's happening. If you, if you include the quality control coaches, if you include the advisory role coaches, 
those those balloons are or those staffs are ballooning like crazy. Alabama has so many quality control guys. It's it's insane. So it, it's already kind of happening, but at least in this case, they are not allowed to be on the field coaching the players. Does it still happen? Yes, because they have indoor facilities. <laughs> yep. Uh, it still yep. happens. Those guys still absolutely are on the field coaching players. Sometimes they're not allowed to. If they get caught, it's a violation. Does it happen? You bet your ass it does. Yeah. But they're yep. also not allowed to be recruiting, which is another thing. They they cannot be contacting recruits, recruit actively recruiting players. Um, so that's that's sort of where those quality control assistants are limited compared to the like proper coaches, the actual coaching staff coaches. Yep. And like I said, it's just it's just a way to help keep things on a somewhat level playing field, even though that the level playing field thing flew the coop a long time ago. Mm -hmm. All right. Got a couple of questions here. Um, got one from Buckeye Zach. Uh, the, the defensive line was far from where it has been in the last couple of seasons. Where are your thoughts on how they strengthen it? Scheme. It's about utilizing your linebackers in an unpredictable manner. It's about better defending the middle of the field, whether it be through your safeties or your linebackers, in order to give the defensive line an extra second or two to get to the quarterback, or half second for that matter. Um, it's about better utilizing stunts and better utilizing slants and putting your guys in a position to succeed. It's it's yeah. Larry Johnson has produced some amazing defensive linemen on this, on this team. And it's not some wild coincidence to me that the defensive linemen started getting worse. Once the entire defense as a whole started getting worse under bad coordination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. It's, it was definitely the scheme. The how state has the players there. It's just, like what Jared said, just get having the right coaches, putting the players in the best position to succeed. Uh, another question, how will the offensive line look next season and what will be different about it post stud? Uh, you know, I, I, I like stud as a developer, so I, I don't necessarily know for a fact that we're going to see the offensive line like, immediately improve in fact considering the talent leaving the offensive line i think it's fair to assume that the offensive line will take a step back at least from a pass protection standpoint that being said you also have like a second year quarterback and a running back who's no longer a true freshman so that will help as far as you know and better utilizing or better making up for some of the lack of talent mm -hmm comparatively on the offensive line this year uh, where it'll really help Ohio state in the long term, in the sort of post stud era of the Ohio state line is just that you're going to be getting better talent. Coach yep. stud was far and away the weakest link on the coaching staff from a recruiting standpoint. That's not a controversial statement. That's not an original statement. It's it's a, it's a fact. Look at Ohio state's last two or three recruiting classes they're killing it across the board, bringing in players, except on the offensive line where they would repeatedly have huge misses. <clears throat> Some of Ohio State's worst, worst in state, in state misses. Going all the way back to Jackson Carmen. And not just in state, but also like Kentucky guys and Indiana guys. Players that you almost expect or almost consider to be in-state sort of players. All of those misses on guys who you really expected to get have come across the offensive line. Yep. Um, another question from Buckeye Zach. Uh, with with um, uh, Kanye uh, committed. 
Canoe, thank you. With Canoe, I'll get it right. Uh, committed <laughs> is the interior line now so monstrous that all opposing offenses just poop themselves. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know if Canoe makes an immediate impact or not. Um, it's hard to do for a defensive tackle. Um, I think I do like where the defensive tackles are at. However, I think Ohio State is... I don't think he's a developmental guy gangland. Um, I, I just think that it's near impossible for a defensive tackle and like, okay, Ty, I know someone's like Tyleek Williams. Okay. But Tyleek Williams came in in relief. Tyleek Williams was not starting. He was not putting in as many snaps as some of the other guys. A lot of people thought he should have been. Maybe there's a reason why he's not. I'm just, it's, and we might see Canoe on the field this year. We might see him contribute on the field this year. But it's a different, there's a big difference between contributing on the field versus being what Gas, Haskell Garrett was for Ohio State, who was a guy who was always out there and was a leader. I think Tyler Williams probably should start next year, Kabuto. I, that's how I personally feel about the situation. Mm hmm. Uh, I wonder if we could get a real quick depth chart to. Uh, I think it'll be another best 11. Very well could be Kabuta or uh, Gangland. Um, man, I wonder if anyone has just just for ref just for reference standpoint. Um, eh, our lads has one. Of course, this this is old. This is this is last year. This this still has. Why would you label it 2022, but then still have Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave on here? Okay, but we'll work with it. Um, uh, Ter uh, Teron Vincent is coming back. So I think that's your nose tackle next year. Um, man, our lads, this is this is garbage. This, is, this was for this year, Kyle, and they have Antoine Jackson starting over Haskell Garrett. What 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 are you doing, our lads? This is what I get for just clicking on the first link. Good lord! Um, I said I, I said just something that, that this would help you, Jared, if you scroll down. It just stick it in the show notes. <clears throat> yes, sir. Ah, uh, okay. This is a this is the scholarship chart, but we'll work with it. Um, defensive tackles, defensive tackles. Uh, Cage will be a contributor this year. Um, I think to me, it's, it's, I think it's Vincent at nose tackle. And I kind of, Kyle, is it Tyler Williams as your three tech defensive tackle? Uh, are we still doing nose tackling three tech defensive tackle? Is that a still a thing we're doing under Jim Knowles? That's another question that probably should be asked. Um, <laughs> yes. I think Ty Hamilton will contribute uh, in the interior. Th I love the defensive tackles. I think they're very deep. Um, yeah, the defensive tackles are very, very deep this year. Or Potentially have Noah Potter coming back. Um, he had uh, a weird medical condition that, that sidelined him for the entire year this year. He'll be available again. I, I don't know in what condition. Uh, I don't know in what shape, but he will be back. Um mm. I really like I really like Hall. I, I think he couldn't potentially come in. He was the guy, by the way, that everyone liked out of that recruiting class. We just haven't seen him. I, I think the defensive tackles are very deep. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, I, potential. There's not a lot of proven talent there outside of, like I said, probably Vincent and Tyleek Williams. Yeah. All right. Um, we're, we're going to go ahead and move on. I, I think, I think, um, we can really get into the depth chart here in a, another episode, but yeah, um, that's a great idea. Um, last question we have from Nomad is, is Guy our only tight end now with Stover back at linebacker? Uh, Kyle, do we know, God, I, I, the COVID year is throwing everything off. Does Ohio State have Mitch Rossi back next year? He could return. He, I think he can return next year. So, so you have your, you have your tight end slash yeah. fullback. Sorry. Back. I just confirmed it. Yes. Rossi 
Rossi can come back next year. Rucker's obviously gone. Guy Scott's available. Um, Royer, who we haven't seen a lot of yet, but mm. I, I have heard that the staff really likes him. Royer will be coming into what I believe will be his third year. Um, you have uh, who was a, a freshman that never saw the field this year um, in Hart. Uh, he, he'll be coming in. You'll have Christian coming in uh, as a true freshman this upcoming year. Um, yeah, there's there's guys there. Uh, is there a starter there? You know, Rossi's your blocking guy and Scott's your receiving tight end. Really, I think just a lot of that depends upon where G. Scott is as a as a blocker. Can you trust him to go out there and be a capable blocker? I think I think that's the big question for the tight ends this year. Yep. Yep. All right, Jared. I think I think that I think that's um all we have for today's uh silly season episode here. I got Got anything else before we wrap it up? Um, I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. Cool. So uh, I want to encourage everyone to join our Discord server. I uh, want to encourage everyone to check out our t-shirt stores. Neither Kyle and I are wearing any merch right now because we're, we're bad podcast hosts. But um, you can go to merch.thesloop. Oh, Kyle, are you are underneath? Underneath? No. Oh, darn. I'm, I'm, wearing, a, I'm wearing a land grant shirt. That's what I'm doing right now, because, you know, beer. Um, what was I doing? Oh, merch.thesleepcast.com. Uh, if you want so if you want to support us by buying some, like, merch, but you don't necessarily want to wear, like, no. Uh, what? No, it's just it's just Land Grant. It's the it's the beer company. Um, the uh, thrown off again. Where was I? Uh, yeah. Or if you want to buy some uh, T-shirts from us that don't necessarily look like podcast merch, you can go to 7071.thesloopcast.com and, and check that stuff out. If you want to contribute to us financially, just, uh, you know, I want to buy a T-shirt, Jared. I just want to help you guys out. I just want to make sure you and Kyle can keep doing your thing. You can you can join our Patreon for as little as three dollars a month. That gives you access to the entire Discord server. It gives you early access to episodes, among other things. So you can you can help us out for like it's three dollars a month. You can sign up for the entire year and get something like a twelve percent discount. So it's like thirty two bucks. It's thirty two bucks for an entire year if you choose to do it that way, or it's three dollars a month until you just don't feel like doing it anymore. There's, there's no, no contracts, no, what's, what's all the, what's all the buzzwords, no contracts, no, this, no, that you just, you do it until you do it. And then you cancel it when you don't want to do it anymore. It's just that simple. Uh, so yeah. Uh, with, uh, yeah. So Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, yeah, I got one thing. A, a Hussey offered a scholarship to probably people probably recognize this name. Uh, Will probably. Smith jr. Absolutely. Um, we, uh, we owe everyone like a, a 2023 recruiting class primer. So we might do that later this, this week, Kyle. Um, we have to do a basketball episode. Uh, we'll talk about the last two games. You can expect that episode next. So there's a sloop hoops episode coming, but we also need to, uh, Kyle, we need to get around to doing like a 2023 recruiting class primer, which, uh, will include Will Smith Jr. I do believe he's 2023. Is he not? I believe so. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, Kyle. Anything so, else in Kyle's corner? Nope. That's it for today. That is it, Kyle. Tonight, uh, ending music will be brought to you by uh, Camp from Athens, Ohio. They spell that C A A M P. C A A M P. Uh, you gonna you gonna stick around? Hear, hear that uh, if you're on the audio version. If you're on the audio version, you just do nothing. Just stick around. It's, it might already be playing, for all I know. Uh, if you're if you're listening to this on the YouTubes, then you can uh, click on the link down in the show notes, and that will take you to the song, because we can't play music on YouTube. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, Kyla lost it. My mind just went blank. I'm going to try it again. Am I going to edit any of this out? No, I am not. But I am going to try again. 
I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Camp.